Over the past two years, what we've been doing is coming up with a design plan for the key road from Central, Central Highway to Commerce Park Drive. What we've come up with for the final uh, cross section that was decided out here for uh, the traffic would be two lanes of traffic going in the eastbound direction, two lanes in the westbound direction. We're taking the bike lanes that are on the road, the width that's being used there, and moving it out to two off-road bike trails. So there'll be a bike trail running full length from Commerce to Seminole, or yeah, Seminole to Commerce and Commerce to Seminole on both sides of the road. Um, the Badger State Trail that has the accurate crossing with the flashers on it right now, where bikes try to get across the road, that is going to switch to an overpass. So an above grade overpass for the bicycles and pedestrians to get, get across there, be able to access it from the trail to get up there so you don't even have to cross the road if you don't want to, you can go right over it. So that increases our uh, pedestrian and bicycle safety for the community in, in that area. The other thing that we've been working on over the past couple of years is stormwater. We've got issues with flooding in the area. We also have to meet state and federal regulations, local regulations for stormwater quality and quantity and, and rate of control. So we looked at that as one of the issues that we were trying to be solving. Traffic has increased quite a bit on McKee Road because of the Verona Road project. And basically all the projects in the city, they're all using Seminole, McKee, trying to get around all the traffic. And one of the concerns was, hey, why are you building this huge intersection when you know the traffic is going to go back down? Well, we took a look at that. It is going to go back down a little bit, uh, but it's also going to pipe right back up with all the development that we have. Uh, we worked with the um, Metropolitan Planning Organization to figure out what kind of traffic we're going to be seeing in the next five to ten years. And you're going to see a 10% decrease when Verona Road opens up, and it's going to creep right back up there within five to six years because of all the development that's occurring in the area. So we have to build this, this intersection for the next 25 years. We can barely get by with a single left turn lane uh, with the new traffic signal improvements. But what that required was we had to do something with the traffic signal timings themselves at Seminole. So what we did, what we did there is, is Jared, he looked at how can we increase the sight distance because we need to have the existing timings that are out there right now because you can't see over the hill and the car's coming up and the cars can't see the, the cars coming at you. So that's why there is a split timing like that. But with the new intersection improvements that they're proposing, uh, we're, we're going to tip the intersection a little bit. We're going to be filling some of the dip that's in there off of Seminole right over here, and uh, uh, probably about three or four feet in the, the, that area. And from there, um, we were able to achieve more tra traffic signal timing uh, for Seminole Highway. And then by doing that, we don't have to have that double left turn lane right away. Um, we did have, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if I'm gonna get my computer running or not, but up here on the plans, we do have, it does show that there are, it's width wide enough for two left turn lanes up here. And the reason that we did that is we heard a concern about, well, when I'm turning left on Seminole, or on, on, on McKee going to Seminole, I can't see when there's a car turning left to go north on Seminole, so the two crossing traffic you can't see beyond. So what we did, instead of having a grass median there and then tearing it out in the future, is we paved that grass median. And what that does is it allows the cars to actually offset each other when you're looking at each other. So you're going to be able to look right down the key road and see the cars coming at you and be able to safely cross. So that, again, you know, increased our safety uh, for that area so that we can go ahead and allow you know, more left-turning cars to be able to see safer up and down the road there. The first thing we're going to do is, is uh, establish a, a bike and pet route on the north side of the road, and that's a combination of temporary and, and permanent facilities that you see here. The next, and that's because the existing <laughs> sidewalk is all on the south side. So following that, the whole south side will be reconstructed. And then we'll just work our way north. So the, the south side, then the middle, then the north side. So it's just going to kind of sequence across. And that's to kind of line up with uh, the, the other project over here. And they're starting closer to Commerce and heading, or just doing it all at once? All at once. I mean, it's really up to the contractor how they want to approach it. Um, but they will have access to our, our staging plans show the north side pedestrian accommodations first, and then the entire south side. 
I mean, they could start in the middle if they want to at the at the overpass. They could start at Seminole. It's really up to their operations how they want to handle that. Um, but then they kind of sequence their way across. Putting that back out to bid in uh, November 28th, and uh, opening up, or it'll be open opening up the bids in November, and uh, construction next year starting in March or April through the end of November, and then uh, it'll be continuing on in 2021 as well. As, a, as another phase. So we've, we've broken the construction down into two phases on Fish Hatchery. Uh, the brake line is somewhere around uh, <coughs> High Ridge Trail to the north and then High Ridge Trail to the south in 21. So High Ridge to the north in 20 next year and High Ridge to the south in 21. <coughs>